The most notorious king of England to ever rule was King Henry VIII, the sixth-wifed king, who would ruthlessly wield the axe across his nation. If anyone disagreed with the king, it would usually result in someone losing their life. But Henry VIII reigned from 1509 until 1547, and despite his reputation, the people of England loved their monarch, even though he caused them a significant amount of chaos and turmoil with his decisions. Much is known about Henry's wives, but there are many facts that people do not know about Henry VIII. Join us today as we look at these, and some of these will surprise you. And as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Henry VIII should never have been the king. He was the original Prince Harry when he was younger, and he was the original spare. Henry's elder brother, Arthur Tudor, was the oldest son of Henry VII and Elizabeth of York, and Arthur was the one who was being prepared to be King of England, and he was raised in such a way during his early life. He was even married off to Catherine of Aragon, a prosperous Spanish princess, who Henry VIII would later make his own first wife. However, Arthur Tudor, the heir, would become sick following the marriage, and with this inside of Ludlow Castle, the heir to Henry VII's throne died from an illness which affected his lungs. Arthur Tudor would have a huge impact on history, as his death would signal the elevation of Prince Henry to the heir apparent, meaning that following Henry VII's death, King Henry VIII would be crowned. Henry VIII was not always a large and grotesque figure, with the 52-inch chest that he was in his final years. As a young prince, he was said to have been incredibly handsome, and he was well thought of across England and Europe. Henry, when he became king, won over the population, executing two of his father's unpopular advisers, but he was a very tall and handsome prince. He was also a skilled tennis player, and was a brilliant archer, in every sporting competition he entered, he won. Obviously, he's not the person you would want to upset if you defeated him in a sporting contest. The king did have a son, who was born many years before Edward VI was. Henry VIII's quest for a male heir would lead him to marrying a number of women, and his quest for a male heir would also lead to a Queen of England losing her head inside of the Tower of London. But Henry did have a son who was illegitimate, and this boy was named Henry Fitzroy, with Fitzroy meaning son of the king, and the boy's mother was the king's mistress, Bessie Blount. Fitzroy was showered in gifts and titles, and he became the Duke of Richmond and Somerset, and to anyone looking at the proceedings, it was clear that the king was possibly considering naming Fitzroy his heir and successor. He even debated marrying Fitzroy off to his legitimate daughter Mary, the future Mary I, to strengthen his claim to the throne. But Fitzroy would also die at a young age, and he was 17 when he died of a condition described in a similar way to Arthur Tudor's fatal health problems. Sometimes nicknames can be cruel and offensive to some, but Henry VIII's nickname was a strange one, Coppernose. This was as during the English Reformation, his kingdom became relatively wealthy, following property and land being seized from the dissolutions of the monasteries. But this money during Henry's reign would run out and get low, and Henry was forced to lower the amount of silver in British coins, and he replaced them with mostly copper coins with a silver coating that wore away the image of Henry's face, and this began with the nose, meaning that Henry's nose on the coins would turn to copper. Before the king split from the Catholic Church, Henry VIII would write a long essay and response to the criticisms of the church outlined by Martin Luther, the German monk. Because of this, he became the first English king to publish a book, and he would then be declared the defender of the faith by the Pope. This declaration would later be withdrawn, but the king would create himself as the supreme head of the Church of England, and would later turn his back on the Pope, as the papacy would not grant him his divorce. Henry 
Henry throughout his life did suffer with his health. His problems with weight are well documented, but throughout his life he also suffered with deadly conditions, which were killing many across London. The king contracted smallpox, which was one of the deadliest diseases of the 16th century, and he did recover from this well, and he wasn't necessarily scarred in his face like his daughter Elizabeth would. He also contracted malaria at some point throughout his life, and both of these illnesses could have killed him, but Henry did seem to get over them well, compared to many other people. Much is known about the execution of two of the king's wives, but there are two wives who would actually outlive the king. The famous rhyme of Divorce Beheaded Died, Divorce Beheaded Survived, does not incorporate the fact that Henry's fourth wife, Anne of Cleves, who was divorced by the king, was actually also a survivor of Henry VIII. She would actually be the longest living of Henry's six wives, and would even outlive Henry's final wife, Catherine Parr. Henry himself died at the age of 55, which was not bad for a man of the 16th century. This fact relates to Anne Boleyn, Henry's second wife, and the king's allegedly kinder side. When Anne Boleyn was sent to the Tower of London following her downfall, and the accusations of adultery, treason and incest, she would not have realised that the tower would become her burial site. Anne is still buried inside of the tower's chapel today, but Henry would order a specialist executioner, who only performed one documented execution in England, to execute his wife. The Sword of Calais, as he was known, was brought from France for the execution of Anne Boleyn, and he was a talented executioner, with allegedly a good reputation. Anne even heard of his work, and this was a way of Henry allegedly being kind to his wife, as the axe was more commonly used in England as an execution method, and this would have been seen as less reliable, and not the way for a queen to lose her head. Henry VIII was possibly the most paranoid monarch in English history, and he would throughout his life believe he was going to be a victim of assassination. There are other kings who were targets of assassination, including Edward I, who wrestled his assassin. However, Henry employed many food tasters to test meals before he would consume them, and if the tester did not drop dead, then the food was good, and the king would eat. He would be terrified of poisoning, would treat most people, even inside his royal court, with a degree of suspicion. He believed some of his closest friends would try to eventually plot against him, hence why so many people and nobles were sentenced to death by the king. A moment that it's believed changed the life of Henry, and made him much more of a tyrant, occurred in 1536. The king on the tilt yard, or the jousting yard, was jousting, and during this he was smashed off his horse, and many believed that he had actually been killed, and it's believed he was knocked out for around two hours, before he finally regained consciousness. Modern historians have debated that the king suffered some form of concussion-related illness, or trauma on his brain, so severe that his personality was changed forever. Following this, the king had much more severe mood swings, and his personality changed, and he became more down, ruthless, and after this, the turbulence with his future marriages and relationships came. Another consequence of this action was that shortly after this, his wife Anne Boleyn did have a miscarriage that added further heartbreak and stress onto the king. He also suffered a leg wound in this that aggravated a previous injury, and his mobility was affected for the rest of his life. What surprises many is that Henry VIII was actually an animal lover. He would throughout his reign have many different pets and dogs, and he also kept canaries and nightingales in ornamental bird cages, which hung in windows at Hampton Court. The king also kept ferrets, but he banned his courtiers from doing so. His favourite pets were dogs, and he kept beagles, spaniels and greyhounds, which were his favourite breed, and he would later breed dogs for war, and some of these were even given to the French as a gift. When he died, 65 dog leads were found in his closet, and his dogs wore coats made from expensive silk. Two of Henry's dogs, Cut and Ball, 
got lost often, and the king paid out around 15 shillings, which was considered a large sum of money in reward to the people who found them and got them back. After he was crowned king, Henry VIII wrote words and music for the song titled Pastime with Good Company. This was a favourite song at court and it became popular throughout the whole of England. The song would celebrate court life and he would write many other songs. Some have even suggested that the king may have written the English folk song Greensleeves, but this is debated. Another strange fact is that Henry VIII was the only English monarch to have ruled Belgium or part of it. Belgium would have a link and an alliance with England for centuries, but in 1513 the English captured the town of Tournal, and Henry VIII would then eventually hand this over to the French in 1518, showing yet again how generous he could be. One of the most brutal executions that took place during the reign of King Henry VIII occurred to Richard Roos, the man who was accused of poisoning Bishop John Fisher's household. Roos was captured after the poisoning, which killed two people, and he was then sent to the Tower of London. Many have believed that Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn may have actually been behind the plot, but to strike fear into the hearts of people who would contemplate this sort of crime, Henry ordered one of the most brutal executions. He would change the laws of his country to allow poisoning to be punishable by boiling alive, and Roos would be boiled alive in front of a huge crowd, and the sight put the fear of God into the people who saw that day. In a similar manner as before, Henry VIII would also change his laws to allow the insane or mentally ill to be condemned. Those who were insane would have been before excused execution if they committed a capital offence, but when Jane Boleyn was condemned for helping the king's fifth wife cheat on the king, she was declared insane. But to make sure Jane lost her head inside the Tower of London, the king yet again changed the laws of his country. Henry VIII, despite his brutality, was said to have been an advocate of respect and chivalry. He would command respect from his court and from his subjects, and he was actually the first king who would be referred to as His Majesty. This is something still used today for kings and queens, and the term derives from the word majestic, meaning regal. As mentioned earlier, Henry VIII had a serious jousting accident, and many have believed that this caused the king's change in personality, and that he actually suffered from some sort of brain injury and trauma from this. But there has also been questions raised that the king suffered from mental illness, and some condition which may have been passed down throughout history. Some historians have claimed that he suffered from depression, and may have even been bipolar, and that his mood swings and brutal actions could have been answerable to some form of condition. There was mental illness inside of the royal families, for example George III was referred to as the Mad King, but the ancestors between he and Henry VIII were not rather linked. There have been many rumours about King Henry VIII, and one of them is that he had his bedroom bricked up each night to protect from assassination and treachery. But this would have been rather impossible. For this to have occurred, the king would have had to wait for possibly hours each night before bed so this wall could be put up, which would then need to be taken down each night. The more possible method of protecting the king throughout the night was probably using locks, which were changed at different times, and only certain people who were trusted had the specific keys to get into the king's chambers, meaning only those people had access to the king. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.